All right, so today's March 17, 2022. My name's Adolfo Romero, and today I have the pleasure to interview Mr. Bernard. Bernard Cohen. All right, Mr. Bernard Cohen, uh, thank you for joining us today. It is a great honor. Uh, your legacy still uh, proceeds over here at our university at UF, and we're happy to have you here today and just have a conversation, discuss a little bit uh, about uh, your experiences at UF. Um, and yeah, and we'll go from there. So to begin, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, when and where were you born? Um, I was born here in Gainesville at Alachua General Hospital. Um, I um, grew up in southeast Gainesville. My mother was a longtime teacher here in, in Alachua County, probably taught for a good 60 plus years. Uh, my father ran a dry cleaners hmm. here in Gainesville on Fifth Avenue for a number of years as well. Um, enjoyed all of my uh, adolescent time here in Gainesville growing up. Um, just a wonderful place to to be a young guy growing up and figuring out the world. Yes, yeah, especially in Fifth Avenue at that time, a prosperous neighborhoods, uh, the yes. community themselves, yes. and I yes. mean, business entrepreneur, your father. Yes, yes. That, Fifth Avenue was the market center for the black community in Gainesville and Alachua County. That is correct, sir. That's it. Excellent. Um, so I guess uh, going now, moving towards uh, your education side, you decided to attend UF. Uh, before attending UF, uh, did you thought about attending other universities? HBCUs or? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I um, had a scholarship at Florida a &M University. I, of course, played in the band. I played woodwinds in the Gainesville High School band. I played the clarinet and saxophone. All right. And um, I prided myself on being a musician. Um, wanted to be a musician as a professional, but I found that there were many, many um, musicians who were much more skilled than I, so I chose a different field. But um, I... Um, I, I, I loved just growing up in Gainesville. Um, we um, made a decision early on that um, if I had an opportunity to come to the University of Florida, I would do that, and that's exactly what I did. I'm very pleased that I did that, and um, here I am. I'm, um, of course, I graduated from Florida in 1974, um, went to work um, probably within a week uh, for the Florida Department of Corrections. Right. I um, began my career with corrections as what's called a classification officer. I was a counselor for all of the inmates at um, Florida State Prison. At that time, one of the only maximum security prisons in the state of Florida. Um, stayed with the Florida Department of Corrections for 33 years, wow. um, various um, senior leadership positions in the department. After that, um, I left the Department of Corrections, state government, and worked for Citizens Property Insurance, which is a, um, a public-private entity that, um, that's some call the, the insurance company of last resort. So when you build that $20 million mansion on the beach and yeah. all state doesn't secure you, please give citizens a call. They've got the perfect <laughs> policy for you. Excellent. <laughs> love it. Love the pitch That's there. <laughs> and um, then after that, I was appointed um, uh, to the Florida Parole Commission, where I was responsible for um, um, considering release uh, opportunities for inmates in the prison system and individuals under supervision by the Department of Corrections. Wow, it seems like you've been around doing many, many things and still in the state of Florida and moving around. Yes. Congratulations yes. on the, the whole pad, pathway towards uh, the point that you are right now. Yes. Um, yes. So yes. I wanted to dive in a little bit into your UF experience. How was it? I mean, it was the early 1970s from, uh, from what I'm understanding. So you were one of the uh, first group cohorts that graduated um, from the University of Florida. Um, being a, a black person, being the individual. Uh, how, how was that experience for you in the first couple of years? Well, that experience was um, um, both sides of the coin, we'll say. Um, uh, I came to the University of Florida in 1970 um, and experienced what the University of Florida was um, 
in those early times. Um, when I came to the University of Florida, there were approximately 130 or so um, black African-American students or American black students here at the University of Florida. Um, I, of course, was one who was arrested um, um, in April of, of 71. Uh, many people refer to that as Black Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't imagine why someone would call it Black Thursday. It was a beautiful spring day to me. Um, but somewhere along the line, uh, someone tagged it as, as Black Thursday. Um, we, um, we felt that the University of Florida was not listening to um, uh, any of the concerns that we had as black students. We were trying our best to find a way to make the culture at this university um, more comfortable for people who were not a part of the dominant community. Um, we um, asked for this Institute of Black Culture. Mm -hmm. um, we asked for more black and brown faculty and students at the University of Florida. Um, we asked for a number of things that we thought would help uh, make this a more healthy community for, for everyone. Um, after numerous attempts to make those requests, um, we, I guess, hit walls and no one would listen to us. So we decided that the best approach would be to take our concerns directly to uh, then President Stephen C. O'Connell, who rather than listen to our concerns, chose um, to kick us out of Tigard Hall and arrest us and take us to Alachua County Jail. Wow. So that was what some people today call Black Thursday, but that was what happened on what some people call Black Thursday. Wow, thank, thank you for that, um, for sharing that information uh, with us. Uh, how did you feel personally at a personal level? Were you part of the Black Student Union at that point or? I was indeed a part of the Black Student Union. One of the first things I did as a freshman at the University of Florida was join the Black Student Union. Okay. Uh, there were a number of other students who I considered um, pioneers, much like myself, a young man by the name of Kip Smith, um, another fellow by the name of Dr. Clarence Martin. He wasn't doctor then, but he was Dr. Clarence Martin later on. Um, and a young lady by the name of Miss Gwen, Gwen Francis. Uh, they were considered leaders in the Black Student Union at that time. Um, and quite frankly, we were um, very fortunate to have a good number of black students interested in becoming members and participating in the goals and mission of the Black Student Union. So I was proud of my membership in the Black Student Union. All right. Uh, going back to Black Thursday, that specific event, uh, do you remember uh, what type of groups were there? Because from what I've been hearing, it's a lot of uh, there was solidarity. Some white students were also joining in. So it wasn't just uh, black students at that time, but it was also some of the student bodies within well, the university. Um, my understanding of what happened, and you have to understand who was what, who was where, when. Um, that day initially started with black students. Uh, on the steps of Tigard Hall. Yes, uh, after we were on the steps for some time, we then went into the building and went up to the president's office, the president's suite, and asked to speak with the president uh, about the concerns that we had. Uh, after the president uh, refused to speak with us, after the president called the university police, loaded us all on buses and arrested us and took us to Alachua County Jail, white students, um, rebelled, came and took over Tigard Hall, took over all of the grounds around Tigard Hall. Uh, the National Guard was called in. Mm -hmm. There were tanks and dogs Whoa. on, you know, in front of Tigard Hall. Um, tear gas. I mean, wow. we came in peace to talk about things that we thought would be helpful to the environment to the culture of the University of Florida. And we were met um, by the end of the day um, with the National Guard, army tanks, and tear gas. Some of that 
was perpetuated by the Vietnam War. Uh, of course, the Vietnam War was raging in 1971. Um, uh, many students, in particular, felt that that was not a war, that the university that that was not a war that that the Ameri that America should be involved in anymore. And um, our efforts later turned into a full protest, anti-war protest against our involvement. America's involvement in Vietnam. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Uh, when you were arrested at that point, how did it feel? What did you feel? Uh, did you talk to your parents at that point? I mean, I could just imagine, you know, that my son is arrested. What happened, you know? Yes, I did talk to my parents, um, of course, after I was released. They kept us for the greater part of the rest of that day, and we were released later in the, in the, in the night, in the evening. Okay. Um, my, um, my mother, of course, came and, and picked me up, and many of the students who were arrested along with me, 66 other students, were arrested at that time as well. Many students' parents um, drove to Gainesville, uh, flew to Gainesville by whatever means necessary to see, you know, how they could um, be of assistance to their, to their kids. Uh, unfortunately, there were many who did not see the positive in what we were trying to do, um, but, you know, our parents in particular felt that r risking our future, um, risking uh, everything that they saw right. as a good path for us um, was just too much of a risk. And, you know, when you look back on it, what we risked was indeed our future. Um, if we were in a position where an arrest meant that we were disqualified for future employment, where we were disqualified for, for everything. Mm -hmm. So all of it was on the line. And, and fortunately, um, the charge that we were ultimately charged with uh, was not one um, that um, would have produced a, um, a, a record of the sort that would eliminate us from future employment. Wow. Um, were there any repercussions afterwards with the university? Were you expelled from the university yes. or what had ha all, what happened all, afterwards? All 66 students who went to jail and some who simply participated in the, um, in the visit to the president's office were placed on um, suspension from the University of Florida. Um, in response to that, um, the Black Student Union wrote to all of the incoming black students who were preparing to come to the University of Florida, apprising them uh, of the environment here at the University of Florida, and asking them uh, not to come, to seek other institutions wow. for, for, their, um, for their future education. Um, thank goodness they did not change their minds and they chose to come to the University of Florida. Anyway, a number of, of those of us who were arrested also chose to return to the University of Florida, but many of those who were arrested and who were not arrested decided that the University of Florida was simply not the place for them, uh, and they moved on to other locations. Okay, um, so talking about uh, your experiences at UF, uh, how did, um, were you part of a fraternity, or how did that get, got started, I guess, with Kappa Alpha Psi? Yes. How did that begin? Um, a, a quick story on that. Mm -hmm. um, as I was um, in my senior year at Gainesville High School, a number of my friends, <clears throat> were, uh, along with myself, were planning our next educational opportunity. They were planning going to college. Um, many of them went to Morehouse, went to Howard, uh, went to Florida right. A&M University, and um, I had previously been introduced to Kappa Alpha Psi by, by a number of members of the Gainesville community, and my friends who had selected to go to Morehouse and Howard told me that mm. if you go to the University of Florida, you're not going to be able to pledge Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. And I thought about that, but my education, of course, was very important to me, and um, I, I just always wanted to, to attend the University of Florida. So uh, after I got here, almost as soon as I got here, um, I started interacting with individuals who also knew about Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated and um, um, were willing to do all that we could to bring a chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi here to the University of Florida. 
Um, we made tremendous efforts um, in late 70 and early 71. And of course, um, with the March on Tigret, um, all of our plans were, were delayed, postponed, and um, that was probably one of the most disappointing uh, events resulting from the March on Tigret. Um, but um, those of us who returned to the University of Florida picked up where we left off and did all that we could to, um, um, to interact with uh, the local alumni chapter of our fraternity as well as the national chapter of our fraternity um, to, to bring Kappa Alpha Psi to, to the campus of the University of Florida. I'm so pleased that we did. Um, there are over 500 brothers throughout the years who have pledged Kappa Alpha Psi at the University of Florida. Uh, as, as you can tell by the, um, the events that we hold here today and have held in the past, uh, it's a very active group. They are all gators. They bleed orange and blue, and they bleed <laughs> crimson and cream, which are our fraternity Gosh. colors. So, um, um, you know, while, while Gainesville and the University of Florida in the early days in the 70s would, would not be considered a perfect place for, for anyone, we're talking about Jim Crow days. You know, I can remember going to mm -hmm. the homecoming parade for the University of Florida and watching a white fraternity don Confederate uniforms on horseback in the Gator Homecoming Parade. Now wrap your mind around that, okay? Um, uh, as, as a member of the band at Gainesville High School, when I was in high school, we would, we would march in the Homecoming Parade uh, and you know, we would have to avoid the horse manure that you know, this particular fraternity that had on Confederate uniforms left in front of us. So, you know, um, there's a bit of irony in that, um, but um, <laughs> we persevered. All of us who returned to the University of Florida then and even to this day uh, still uh, have great love for the University of Florida. Well, I'm glad to hear that. It's, it's hard to take in just for the fact that, you know, you've gone through all this and then you sort of like turn that around, like had a different behavior or attitude towards it, no resentment or, you know, holding back that many would probably do, you know, right. hold that resentment. But it seems right. like, you know, you, you got past that and right. moved on. Well, I don't know that I've gotten past that and moved on. I'm still hoping for the day when the University of Florida yes, can sir. apologize for putting my future at risk when the University of Florida can apologize to all of those other individuals, the other, those other students who were with me and put our future at risk. To this day, I cannot recall a time when the University of Florida invited those individuals back to this campus to render an apology, to tell us about any progress that has been made in the areas of diversity of this culture, uh, and I still hope for that day to happen. Yeah, and I'm sure they're not afraid to call you up all the time. Like, do, would you like to donate some money? Yes, to the they UF, do. You know? Yes, they do. They're not afraid to say that, but they yes, cannot they give do. us an apology for, you know, for what had happened. Yes, so absolutely. And mind you, I am a life member of yes, the University sir. of Florida Alumni Association. I attend almost every home football game and have for years here at the University of Florida. They call me every time there's a need to write a check. Uh, I'm also a member of the um, Black Alumni Association here at the University of Florida. So when you talk about being a full participant in what this institution stands for, um, I think that um, I and many of my friends and associates are, are examples of that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Um, with that said, uh, can you tell me a little bit about your experiences uh, at IBC? Uh, I mean, you were around that time where it got created and started. Uh, how was that inception? And were you participating, you and your friends? Uh, at that point, the fraternity, were they involved in, at, at IBC? Would you guys have meetings in there? Or how was that uh, space used back Yes, then? we did. Um, going back to that time, yes. of course, the Institute of Black Culture was one of the concerns that um, we um, voiced uh, early on and that we wanted to talk to then President O'Connell about uh, and soon after, not soon after, I, I'd say a year or so after 
um, the March on Tigret. Um, there was an old building here. Um, I forget who owned the building at the time, but that building was, was um, re-engineered into the Institute of Black Culture. And to come here today, um, it, it's just a, a shining example of, of what progress has been made at the University of Florida. I'm just hoping for there to be a whole lot more. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for the University of Florida to do things right, to make this just a wholesome, healthy community for everyone. And it, it should make sure, this university should make sure that they don't drop the ball in the future when they have the opportunity um, to make life better for all students at this university. Yeah, that is one of my concerns and I actually put a question on that on, you know, we have like low black enrollment uh, for black students or just minority overall. Minorities but, um, overall. Yes. But overall, uh, and those are questions that I ask myself, like why aren't students coming in here? Why do, is it just because they don't want to come in or is there deeper things that are happening on the institution that they sort of feel like they're left out or something? I'm not sure, but well, maybe you could shed well, some light on that. In my opinion, uh, students are not coming here, number one, because of some of those historical events that have happened at the University of Florida that there has never been an apology for, that there has never been an acknowledgement of. You know, for example, uh, when Virgil came here and wanted to go to law school, the University of Florida made a deal with mm -hmm. him to not ever apply again, as opposed to letting him come to the University of Florida. You know, when we, uh, black students in spring of 71, um, went to see Stephen C. O'Connell about our concerns, rather than listening to us and doing what he could do for us, uh, he chose to arrest us. And you know, even to this day, um, when current President Fox of the University of Florida talks about making changes, like examining uh, these buildings that have mm -hmm. the names of, of known segregationists and, and of known Confederates, um, mm -hmm. there needs to be a change uh, to all of that. Furthermore, I don't know if the University of Florida has ever examined its enrollment process. Why? would we let a process stay in place all these many years without ever looking at the threat factors around that process? If there are things in the process of enrollment and admissions into the University of Florida that don't have to be there, but impede black and brown students from coming here, we need to take a serious look at that. This is 2022. Why not have a process where you go out and you identify um, um, black and brown students who are excellent scholars at the middle school and high school level? Reach out to those individuals. Tell them about the University of Florida. Tell them we have a place for them at the University of Florida. And when they graduate, we know what they've done academically. We know what they've done socially. Why not offer those kids and a, an admission on the spot. We can do it for football players. We can do it for basketball players. Why can't we do that for, you know, young boys and girls who happen to be black and brown and want to be a part of the University of Florida? We can do that. Absolutely, absolutely. We bring really great points and factors that uh, UF should consider reconsider, definitely uh, make it, put it in the agenda or something because we definitely need some, I think enrollment, uh, I guess uh, the enrollment, if we look at the statistics, that's when, if we look at the data, data doesn't lie. The numbers don't lie. How many people we have versus how many we don't. That's and right. obviously there's a lack of numbers. There, and there, is. There, there needs to be an extra zero there, an extra number to double the digits down. Absolutely, and when you look at digits, when you compare, other universities, like that school out west, some of us call it Florida State University, mm -hmm. their numbers as it, as it relates to diversity, much, much better than the University of Florida. Why is that? If the University of Florida can be one of the top five public universities in the entire United States, how come they can't be the top five university as it relates to diversity? Yes, sir. If they can, can compete with the best researchers in the world, how come we can't research what causes black students 
to choose other places than the University of Florida. We can do that. You guys are here. I'm here. I've been here for 60 years. That is correct. We can do it. We can do it. I like that message. Uh, I don't want to take too much of your time, sir, uh, Mr. Cohen, but I would like to maybe, if you could leave us with a message that you would like to leave to the next generations that are watching this. This could even be, you know, anything that you want to say regarding even enrollment, whatever you want to say, a message to the next generation, maybe on why they should attend UF, maybe what can they do on their end, I don't know. Whatever message you would like, please, this is the time. Okay, um, I don't know that I was really prepared for sending a message into the future, but my message would have to be, um, after you work hard, um, you should um, do all that you can to, to stay relevant. Uh, one of the best ways to do that is to get a good education. This university provides an excellent education. Uh, I challenge everyone uh, to take a, a hard look at the University of Florida. Do what you can to get here. In spite of everything, find a way to succeed. All right. All right, Mr. Cohen. Well, that's it for me for All now. Right. I, I, I don't want to delay you too much out okay, there. I know people are you. looking through the yes. glass like, hey, bring them yeah, back over here. It is hot in here with yeah. this jacket on, let so, me tell you.